We are. Welcome to the studio. I'm David Austin with DavidAustinGallery.com. And as usual, behind the camera, my beautiful, brilliant wife, Kristen. Hi, y'all. And we're going to do um, some poured painting techniques, sort of, today. <laughs> so poured paintings become very become a, a thing. They even had a recent show on, right? Competitions. Oh, the making, Montano. meet your maker. Yeah, that was really cool. And I enjoyed it. And I actually learned some things because it's come a long way since I first did it back in early 2000s to the mid 2000s. And then I dropped it because it wasn't meeting my needs. And then I brought it back a little bit. And now I incorporated it as not a means to an end, but a technique to carry forth a piece and, and it develop it. So I want to kind of talk about that. You know, is it is it craft or is it a fine art, the poor painting technique? To me, it's a technique to create fine art. And that's the way that I like to approach it. The poor painting and the marbling for dipping and things like that is absolutely wonderful. And there's some brilliant, brilliant people using the technique in more of the craft end of things. But I want to talk about the fact that a lot of the fine artists maybe not do it as much, that especially in my case, I, I'm a mixed media artist, so I'm incorporating charcoal and tempera paints and oil and all this other stuff, and watercolor, all into one, onto one piece. So I wanted to talk about that today because I was so inspired about learning some new techniques, of which I probably won't do today because I don't have silicone oil. <laughs> I, would, I couldn't even find the WD-40. Okay. Those kinds of things are used for creating the cells to help expedite the cells. We're going to try and recreate some of that at a certain scale. Oh, I'm breathless already. Yeah, he's, he's had a cough for about a month, guys. So. Yeah, I've, I've had a lung issue for a whole month. It's been super fun. Let's see how this goes today. So this was one I did yesterday, a pork piece, and it's still a little wet. And I'm not 100% happy with it. But we're going to kind of work into it. I'm going to talk about what do I do with the piece. Well, I'm going to work it a little more. I could white it out completely and start over. Or I could look at it for a bit and then come back to it. Today, I think I'm going to come into it and apply a few techniques to this. As well, not a pour, some other, show you some other things that I do towards the end to finish a piece or move it forward into that next step. And then I think we're going to pour, do some actual pour over here on this other board that I have on the side. So, so we're going to try and cram a lot into a short amount of time today. And we're not going to be able to cover all the techniques. There's plenty of videos out there on YouTube and Insta and everywhere else on TikTok. A brilliant pouring artist. I mean, some of the stuff we looked at recently, Kristen, was, was incredible. Yeah. So one of the things I like to do afterwards, some people have asked, how do I finish a piece? And so I'm just going to do some mark making and show you. This is an acrylic marker. This one's from Poster Man. But I can make marks like this. I can press it down and really let that paint come out of it a lot. And you can get a really nice strong line through it. The nice thing about it then, with all of these, is that you can come back in and you can spray it if you want to fuzz it out. You spray it and it starts to move just a little bit. And you can create almost a veil look to the piece. So I'm going to let that transition from a crisp line into this veil that it's blending into there. Let's just spray it this water. This water. And we're going to take on top of that, this is some acrylic medium. It's a satin varnish and I put mica paint into this. They're not paint, but it's mica. They come in these neat little things, mica powder. There's a number of brands out there. You can grab those. They're fun. It's fun to work with. It gives a little shimmer and shine to the piece. And you incorporate that with a satiny or a gloss varnish or some other kind of medium. And you can really start to create some neat effects. So I'm just going to go ahead and pour some of that on there right now. And drop the cap. Oh, well, we'll get that later. <laughs> just wash it off. No one even knew. Enjoy. Already, there's been a reference. <laughs> to the television shows. You can see the white is already affecting that, that undercurrent of the white there. So now I'm going to take, and I'm going to take some gesso and put that over the top of that. Swipe through it a little bit. And that'll create some interesting effects as well. Then we go a little bit thicker. 
So one of the things that creates the cells is the different viscosity, or different density of the pigments, for example, in paint, as well as the viscosity that will have effect on. This is just white gesso here. Is this heavy body or just? This is a clearly not heavy body. Okay. <laughs> I, I ask questions. <laughs> One thing, don't laugh when you have a sore throat. Yeah. So now I can also take the palette knife and I can draw it across the piece and really start to blend some of that together. Andy Troll from my son's sandbox, sandbox toys. <laughs> Love it. One of the things I like to do too is I like to then come in through, and this is a paint stick. It's a tempered paint stick. It's just some brand from a major outlet. You can buy them all over the place. And then I can make some marks in here too and start to blend the different techniques together. So that's a fun way to do things too. Then, up here, I can take my paint marker. I'm going to do some strong geometric lines up here to create some contrast to all of the cord painting. And again, today I'm just trying to show you to hit our favorite hashtag, Kristen, create without fear different techniques. I want you to explore. Take the poured painting technique and take it into a different zone. Go further with it and explore what you can do with it. That's what I want to see people doing more of. Poured painting is beautiful, but incorporate all the other different techniques you know, and you can come up with some amazing effects. It's going to take practice, right? But that's, that's, what you, it's, that's the fun part. It's the process. Not so much the end result, I think. So now I'm going to pour, this is an acrylic ink, and I'm going to pour that right onto this, just like that. And I'm going to do a little bit of a flick right there, and one up here to kind of create some continuity in the colors. We can boil it around, but I'm not going to do much. And that's acrylic ink, everybody, not alcohol ink. I would never recommend getting that getting close your face to, alcohol. to alcohol ink. Now you can see the different, again, the different pigment, pigment load and the viscosity. We're creating some cells in there, as well as the kind of a hairspur thing. We used to call that ceramic hairspur. Um, and that's going to create some really nice cells over here as well. You can already see it coming. If I'm lucky and I didn't mess it up, I can take a little heat to this. And I can help maybe expand that cell a little bit. See it popping out? So you don't want to overcook it. And it'll start, as it's drying, those cells will come out even more. I have a question for you. Yeah. Do you sell under the form under the many layers? Uh, well, the, the layers below it come up through it and vice versa. So there's an intermixing of the, of the sorts. But and I can't remember which way it goes because I frankly just works quickly now. I don't think about it much. But it has to do with whether you have the lower viscosity has to be different than the top one. And the lower density on the bottom versus the top. That's what it is. Thank you, Megan. But you can, like I said, you can find a million other people out there that are better at creating the cells and doing the other things. My point in mentioning all of this is that I want people to explore the technique beyond just doing the four techniques. Go back into this again. I don't know if I answered that very well or not. She said thank you. Okay, good. <laughs> I've lost my favorite palette knife again. Uh, in my defense, my brain's not 100% here right now. I mentioned that. 
Other, other types. <laughs> so you can take and create a little texture. This is with the. And one of my favorite ways of creating kind of those, that cell look is actually not even a poor painting technique, but it's related to it. And I'm going to show you that in a second. Just kind of seeing where else I want to put some of that. Here. Pull some of that down to create some texture. <laughs> so it's almost, I feel like I'm cheating sometime when I do this next technique. And you'll see why I'm doing it. Studio is a little bit of a mess because we did that home show last week. Right? Yeah, the home show last week. That was a lot of fun, but the result is everything's kind of. Topsy-turvy. This is an art spray. Now, I don't think you can get quite the same effect from the uh, acrylic spray cans, wherever they are. I have one right here. This is Liquitex. Amsterdam makes a really nice one, too. But I, I, I don't find it to, to make the cells or the, the little circles quite as good with this versus this. It has to do with the distribution of the material. In this case, this is a little pump bottle, spray bottle. And this is a much, it doesn't atomize it as much. And so it creates more puddling of the pigment. And then that makes more pigment cells. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and spray this on, maybe. Now, of course, it's a dead one. <laughs> Always keep your knuckles clean. Yes. Yeah. So we have to work quickly and forget to do it. Hold on, I got another one. Hopefully this one works. It's a different purple. I wanted the red one. I would clean that off and clean it clear, but we don't have time. It's like the cooking show. Do they have chives? Now you're going to have a poor oven. You need more butter. <laughs> Always more butter. Okay, so this is going to be pretty cool. And I'm just loading it up, loading that pigment up, loading that spray up in there. Watch what's happening already. Look at the separation of the colors. See that? Now that's just plain cool, right? Now watch what happens over here. And some of this won't stay because it's too fluid. The, the paint is too fluid on some of this. And so it won't actually stay the cells. But some of it, some of it will, a lot won't. Does that make sense? But you can see what's happening, all right? The bottom colors are coming up through this purple now. She's having technical issues over there. Oh, I just, I just need better equipment. Need that grant. <laughs> yeah. We applied for a grant. It's been years since I've done grants. Yeah, grant to keep this show going. Good morning, everybody. Nice to see familiar faces. Too bad we like it. To oh. those who are new to us, we do this every Saturday morning. Or something to this effect. Or whatever time it is where you are right now, <laughs> this is the time. I, in about 10 minutes, Australia will wake up or something in here. So this is the white acrylic ink again. And I'm just going to take through and do a, a swipe through this. We're doing well. We're doing pretty well, Jeremy. How about you? Other than the persistent lung issue that I yeah, have. Yeah, except for the cough. But, you know, hopefully we'll go back to the doctor next week. Yay. Okay. <laughs> so that was some more there. And this here. I'm going to take some yellow through. That's the acrylic white paint. Nice gap of fabrics. So now, we're also getting now some of the, the things that I enjoy are this swirly kind of foggy motion. I think when you have crisp lines and then, whoa, hello. <laughs> okay. like said, That's going to be me when I get new equipment. Hello from Sweden. Hi. I forgot what I was saying. I was so distracted. I'm sorry, everybody. Camera that almost died. <laughs> So this, this is one of the things I like to do. So one of the reasons I end up doing some of these poor painting techniques is I don't like to waste materials. I get down to the bottom, this is Windsor Newton, but I have Amsterdam and I have other irons too that I've got to play with. The, these bottles, when you get down to the end, you can never get all of it out of there, unless of course you're taking your brush and digging it out. And that's fine, that's, that's brush technique is something I do a little bit of. <laughs> Although, the figurative ones over there recently, 
Uh, don't show them yet. It's a secret. <laughs> Those are secret. Yeah. There's a show coming up. Um, so I add some acrylic medium in here. You can add some pouring medium into it at, at the end of this, this can and use the existing pigment, shake it up, maybe even a little water. And then you could also add a couple drops of the silicone oil uh, in there as well to help create those cells. I think I made some there, right? So now I'm going to take, and I'm going to take here to, to find it. It's a mess in here today. So I'm going to take my plastic. You can do this with paper towel. In fact, let's do a paper towel. We are doing okay, Sandwich Mavericks, here. Yeah, we're doing just getting through a slow spring and looking forward to a busier summer. Okay, so I'm going to just put this right along here. And if it works, it should create some interesting techniques. If it doesn't, oh well, I'll figure out something to do with it. Just dragging that pigment right up there, trying to be really steady, using my whole body, trying not to actually fall into the paint. My calves are killing me. My quads. Oh, God. Okay, we made it through that one. So, and for those who just asked, but we don't do um, cold lives anymore. It's too chaotic. I'm chaotic enough. We're already enough chaos. So, you can see some of the cells are happening. I can take the heat again, and I can give it a little encouragement, and I should pull some up a little quicker, too. See them popping a little bit. I think one of the quicker methods, though, still beyond heat and everything else, the fastest I've seen is using the silicone ones. And again, I'm sorry I didn't, <laughs> didn't do it today. So this is going to develop as it dries. The cells will come out through there because we layered that paint with different viscosities and different pigment loads of that paint. Okay, next. Are we making progress on anything? I don't have any progress. That's all I'm going to do today. I'm just trying to keep my equipment together. <laughs> Here is my favorite hot pink. I'm going to take this and do a pull right across, All right, so. right across this. I want more. I more. That's my question. I ask every week anybody else out there painting? <laughs> Boy, she's persistent <laughs> about that, isn't she? I am. And then somebody asked me why I'm not painting, and I'm like, oh. It's all right, here, we just had this one. This is a dirty one. All let's right, just go ahead and pull it. let's do it. I'm going to do it two places. I'm just going to try to pull it straight over, right through that stuff. Woo! Look at those colors. And just pull it right all the way over until it just peters. Oh, yeah, that's sexy. Peters. <laughs> Peter right out. This is good. Good paint pull. Okay, let's do this one. one through here. Hands are shaky from all the meds. Yeah. Oh, it's so bright. Yes, we love the neons around here. Did anybody else know that Van Gogh used uh, neon oils in his oil paints? That's why they're so luminescent. Also, why when they try to repair them, it doesn't always work. <laughs> Aw, thank you for the roses. Awesome. Okay, so already over here, we've got some really neat little cells, some little you know, galaxies. I like to call them galaxies. Are to form. Are you going to come over into my zone? No, I'm going to come here to this zone. I'm wearing a white shirt. Oh, uh, you're looking closer? I'm going to give you a hug. <laughs> and then, of course, I never like to waste my paint, so here's a little bit of Scrapey scrape. Scrapey scrape right there. It's good play mix today. Hmm? Music's good today. Yeah, for changes. Kind of interesting there. So we're building layers up. I may not get to the fresh one. I'm, getting, I'm enjoying this so much and painting over this and creating those additional layers that I may not actually get to doing a raw one from the beginning. But so many times, all of you are seeing the beginning stages 
and not what I'm doing after that. They all, the big question I get is, how, how long does it take you to make that painting? Well, as long as it takes. You know, sometimes <laughs> I get lucky, everything falls together and I stop. I go, hey, that's it. Other times you got to work it, work it, work it, work it. It can take years. I have pieces wandering around the studio right now that, that are from uh, 2007, yeah. six. Okay, where was I going with any of this? I don't know. Charcoal. <laughs> It's interesting. I like the, the big charcoal chunks from the called the general. general. The general the charcoal, general charcoal chunk. chunks. Can't get them right now. Yeah. Made. I think they're. I don't, I'm assuming they're like made in one of the foreign countries or China. No, they were made in Kentucky actually. Kentucky. I don't know why they can't get them still. Oh, there's a library here. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> I am not a trained photography professional. No, but you do very well. Consider. Right on the job. So I'm scribing through now, and even through some of these areas where the, the, the cells and the other pigments are, are traveling, it's good to add a little bit of the black chalk to it. Just give it a little gestural hello. A gestural hello. I just made a new thing for myself. <laughs> Put it on a t-shirt. Quick, put it on a t-shirt. Someone better, you better hurry up. Now everybody's heard it, they're probably all copyrighted. <laughs> so this was a charcoal that I had. Actually, this is a pen. No, this is charcoal. I don't know what brand this is. This was one that we tried. It's Alpha Color from Alpha Color. Charcoal with a K. And it's just awesome to draw through. Uh, the surfaces and layers. Welcome, everybody. I'm sorry I'm not typing much, but every time I touch the screens, everything jiggles. <laughs> so here's. Oh, bad question for you. Sure. From Rachel, do you sign your paintings, and if so, what brush tool do you use? <laughs> brush tool. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Pencil. Oh. Sometimes pencil, and then of course it's all sealed. Most of the stuff I'm signing, I'm using an acrylic marker. Black, blue, whatever the one that has the most ink in it. So this one is a Posca, but actually lately I've been using the Amsterdam ones because I can get a little bit cleaner line. So I'll use whatever color I want. And so this is an acrylic marker, it has a little nib in it, and I love to use these to sign. And I sign the front. Sometimes I don't want the signature to overtake things, so I'll just do a little, little one, like DKA in the corner. And then on the back, I'll sign it. I'll do it my full name, my website, and, and the, the year. I don't do the months on them. And then when my son paints with me, we put his name in there too. Yep. So this has been really fascinating. It didn't do what I thought I was going to do, which was going to be raw on that one. We, instead, we kind of did some interesting fold techniques. Now, the next thing I love to do is, let's see here. Let's try take some black. There's a thicker one. Oh yeah. Very funky in here now. <laughs> this is a curlic black gesso from Amsterdam. Love this stuff. I really like to put it down on a surface and then take white chalk over the top of it and do drawings, buildings of drawings or people or do little symbols on it, things like that. So I just love to do it. And much like I was talking with the other ones that are almost empty, I'll add water or acrylic medium to the end of it, and I'll use that for pouring or for bases and things. Right now we're gonna take this palette knife, and I'm gonna kind of make some really strong black lines. Ah, the black lines. And instead, of, I'm just gonna do it. Anybody else have a pigment that's struggling with right now, but love using? So now I'm scribing through it, creating some gestural marks. 
And I went back through this again. And every time you go through it, you, two things can happen. One, it can muddy it, or you can create some more interesting shapes and interesting cell structure and things that happen along that line. Let's take, and I don't want to contaminate my. Trying to use less weight. Loving chromatic blues. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, okay, the blues. I cannot get, I can't get away from blues. That's my thing. I'm trying to figure out where I want to get rid of this on here. I'm just going to put it over here. Because I don't like to waste paint. A lot of times these structures here, the, the surface that I put down is not actually fixed. And the sub the subsurface here ends up being a painting. <laughs> I'll work it later. At a certain point, I look at it and go, yeah, that looks cool. I'm going to make, it, I'm going to finish that and make a real painting out of it. Well, thanks for sharing our short video, Hunter. I appreciate it. <coughs> I guess I'm not very good at asking TikTokers to do things for me. So now I'm going to add just a little bit of this and see what happens. Whoa. That's going to create some interesting things. That's a little too thin. I wasn't expecting it to be that thin. It's a little bit better. So this is adding, obviously, the bold black is adding contrast to the piece, adding some structure to it, depth, the perception of depth as well is adding, because we're overlapping shapes and, and, and having that contrast too. So there's a lot of reasons to use black. It can also be, you can overuse it very easily, or you can just do an all black piece. So you can take different kinds of blacks, which have different reflective qualities, and you can create a really neat surface. One of the things that I like, I don't know if I can do it on this one. If I can find a spot to do it, I'll show you, but so far I haven't found a spot. I'm out of studio before I can. Oh, Where no. Is? No. Thirsty. Thirsty. There's the other stuff around right by the desk, if you understand. Yeah, I gotta have to go around. I'll try not to move too much. It's crowded and you're like crazy. So now I'm gonna take my uh, white garage floor drink. Yeah, that. garage floor properly chill. This <laughs> has something in it. Uh, I don't want to use that. I'm gonna save that one. Okay. One of the things I liked experimenting with is the, the pearls and the metallic colors. Um, so I only have a little bit of that left, so I'm going to save that. I'm trying to find something here. I'm having trouble finding it. Ah, why didn't you tell me it was over there, everybody? Well, we're not playing Blue's Clues today, David. Blue's Clues. <laughs> Gesso into a very smelly pot. There's a certain point where paint gets sticky. <laughs> Surprised you can even smell it with the infection you have in your That's how bad it is. <laughs> how stinky this is. It's really stinky. Does anybody over on YouTube have any questions today? My group on YouTube today. Do you ever mix that and then matte paints? Yes. And what is the effect of mixing it too? Well, if you mix a satin with a flat, you're going to end up with a, somewhere between the two as far as reflectivity. Um, but if you're talking about, it's like mixing metallics with flats or any others, you, you have a different reflectivity coming off of it. So if you use a flat white and then you use a gloss black or something on top of it, you're going to have very, very high contrast, not just in the color, but also in the reflectivity quality. So um, I think it's absolutely fascinating to, to, do, the, to do those it's things. It's a good way to make a painting shimmer. Should, yeah, shimmer shape, shimmer shape. So all I did is I got this big haka brush. There's paddle brushes you can use too. This is a, an Asian brush. Put it together with bamboo, it's individual brushes are all connected. And it's really, you can get really a lot of paint loaded in there. And you can see what happened as I swipe through there. And that's going to react with the, this other. You can see it's making a nice little fog. And it's going to travel because my floor is not perfectly flat. And that's okay because I like the improvisational nature of painting. I'm not a precise painter. There's people that are phenomenally skilled, phenomenally skilled. 
on realistic painting or creating things that are very hype. I'm ADHD. I don't have patience for that. <laughs> so that's why my paintings are the way they are. You know, one of the things I always suggest to people is be yourself. Be the painter that you already are. Don't try to be some other painter. Otherwise, you're always going to be suffering because you're always trying to be something that you're, that you're not naturally inclined to do. Does that make sense to anybody? Rachel does. I got some pretty cells over here, for sure. Hi, did you? Welcome back. Okay, so this is some, some tempera paint. Some of you that watched our previous videos, when, when Hugo and I paint, he, he likes to mix paints. It's like a science experiment for him. It's always, <laughs> so we have safe temper paints for him to use. Um, I like Sargent Art ones, so if you've got kids, so far I can recommend those. They seem to be some of the safest and less stinky. Uh, I'll answer that question. How does he know when to stop and not overwork? He doesn't always. Sometimes hey. his gallery stops him and he sends a photo. Sometimes I walk in and stop him. Although I have to say, the last six months he's been getting much better at self editing. Yeah. And that's, that's just the product of time in studio, time in practice. But in seat. Yes. Everybody's success. So many six, people ask about success with artists and, and so often it's has to do with just working. You just work. Perseverance. Absolutely. Perseverance. I've had to come up with that hump to speak myself. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. You had, a busy, you had a busy couple of weeks. Yeah, I'm sort of looking forward to being between projects again. Oh, hi Muhammad. Okay. You know last week we didn't get to address the this brush. I thought maybe I'd get to it today. That's right, we had the phone call. But yeah, our eldest. Um, we're going to get back to this, okay? I promise. I've got plans for this. And I think, you know what we could do is on one of the big tapestry pieces using this. Oh, yeah. You know, so, but it takes some prep time. And we had the home show last week, which took up the entire week. And it made my lung issue even worse. And so I, I had to take. I'm Rachel, just trying to my cover. suggestion to you for that problem is you find somebody who has good taste that you trust, and you start sending them pictures. And when they say stop, yeah. stop for a few days and come back. I think that's what worked for David. Yeah, for sure. Self-editing is hard for anybody. You know, you can even start, if you want to be on the over, you know, whatever social platform you're on that we're on. Can't guarantee we always have time to look, but we make an effort. Yeah, we do try. Um, it's not, it's not, especially in busy weeks, it's hard to get to everybody, you know. That brush is actually a wallpaper adhesive brush that he found at the hardware store that he's not yet had time to use. I love the hardware store. Because we were at the home show in Duluth at the deck last week selling art and pots. Hardware store. Yep. Got the we call it a roofing brush, but it's actually for wallpaper. How are we doing on the time, though? We got about 15 minutes. I know you got to go at some point. I thought it will be in 15 minutes. So. so there's a certain point you get to where you can, you, you probably should stop, or you think about stopping, or you look at it, and take a step back. You know, there was a painting here already before, and then I started building up on it. I wasn't planning on going that far. But I was having fun. Process is good. Process is fun. Um, I definitely recommend just exploring things sometimes and see where it goes. So I have a hot pink though. Here's paint stick. It's not exactly the fluorescent pink I wanted. And then here it is. No, that's not it either. Oh no! <laughs> it's MIA. Oh no! It's Hazel! <laughs> oh yeah, the loopiness is kicking in. All right, we're going anywhere. Oh yeah, we posted all these lives um, on both YouTube and our Instagram, so you can go back and check it out anytime. There are probably 120 of these that we've made. So thank you for joining us, Rachel. It's great to have you here. Yeah, I appreciate. Week, I hope. Appreciate all of you. Joining us. We're still going because Rachel's leaving today. <laughs> yeah. For the moment. 
So we're getting into some details and using, now we're talking about finishing things. So I'm coming in with this, this is the paint stick. I'll come in and use charcoal and pencils as this progresses. Like for example, I like the Brunzel. These are Brunzel pencils. This is like the full range of their hardness factors. And I like to use these for detail work. I also like even the creek markers are fun. Ah, uh, creek. They're um, a these smelly, are little dabbers. They get, they're stinky, <laughs> and I don't like to use them in the wintertime. These are more, more in the later stages. The other thing I like to use are these. This is the acrylic ink from Amsterdam inside of Molotov. Um, empty. These are markers. You gotta watch the top ones to pop out. Okay. Don't shake it with this. You shake it with this one. So, <laughs> in all honesty, it was more than once. <laughs> I was trying to. You were trying to be kind to me. Yeah, because yeah. I was. I appreciate that. You know, because it was our anniversary yeah, the other day. And I didn't plan well. <laughs> I actually did pretty well this year, just yeah. because I remembered. We were, we were both bad at it, though. Bad. We got terrible, but we don't take it too seriously either, which helps. So there's there's the acrylic marker, bringing that in there to create a little more interesting color. I'm trying to pop certain areas of this. Oh, uh, no, you've shaken the marker, too? Yeah. Yep. I'm shaking it right off the thing, flying off the end across the room. <laughs> if you're really lucky, it hits something that you've finished and it's, like, framed and ready to go. <laughs> Oh. I'm so sorry. It's a little different than what you it's, bought. <laughs> it's no longer. So we joke about this, but one of the fun things on doing this technique, the board painting techniques and the dribbling and all this, is watching it dry. <laughs> so it's fascinating. You get lost in this. This is when you go pour yourself your favorite drink and you sit there and just and watch YouTube it. YouTube videos at two hours long. You're just watching it. Just watching it dry. It dry. So you read music behind and probably make a million dollars. I'm really enjoying a lot of what I'm seeing here. And I, I don't want to mess too much more with it, but I'm going to. Oh, and he did it anyway. So I'm going to outline a few things. La, 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 la. I think we can just move past this. That was Gosh, funny. that was a really experimental piece of hand music there. Which sometimes I have patients with. Do we frame pieces? Yes. Yeah. As a matter of fact, we have a relationship with the local framer, Lizard's Art Gallery in downtown Toulouse. And they do a fabulous job framing his odd surfaces. <laughs> yeah, they've done some really nice work. We have, in fact, we have, you, we just uploaded this week um, five works on paper. They're 22 by 30, and then they're framed with white frames. Really nice. Check it out on, on the website if you would. And I love working with watercolor paper because of the absorbency of it. And you don't get that quality with the, the panels. You can sort of get it if you use what's called an absorbent ground, which absorbs pigment, supposedly. But it's still not the same characteristic. There's nothing like 100% rag, uh, cotton, watercolor paper, especially heavy. Get, get heavy as you can go. If you can get 300, get 300. If you can't get 140. And that stuff is just really, really phenomenal to work on because of the absorbency of it. So these same techniques, try them on watercolor paper. Anyways, I think, I think there's some videos wandering around if you go back a little I have three questions for you. Oh my gosh. Okay. What do you use to outline? What am I using right now? I don't know. Just what do you use to outline? So right now I'm using uh, chalk. And this is the charcoal with a K. So it's just a black chalk. Oh, no. And then uh, after it dries, I use acrylic markers. Next question is, what are you painting on today? I'm painting on a quarter inch Luan, which is a type of plywood. It's an underlayment that's commonly used in the building trades. Mr. DeSanto down the street calls it a monkey board. I get nervous every time you say that. I have no idea why he says he calls it that, but he does. Yeah, I'm hoping it's not like some old thing. He's very old. He's a very nice guy. Anyway, so I hope it didn't offend anybody. Uh, what's the product you are using? <laughs> Everything. Usually, Rosie, I will write a few of what we're using the majority of on the uh, video description when it goes later. Um, but if you're super, super curious, just DM us and we'll try to get into the specifics. But today, it's mostly acrylic paints. 
and acrylic inks and charcoal with the cake. Yeah, and I like to bring in the pastels in too. Some of our other videos I'm using pastels. Not the oil the, pastels. No, not oil. I, I, I am going to play with those. I have some really nice oil pastel sets I haven't worked with. Well, you want to let the cobra oil Cobra oil, so that's oh, frankly, I might steal them from you if you don't use yeah. them. Uh -huh. I'll share them with you. Water mixable oil color. This came in. I've yet to play with it because it's just been crazy busy spring. Lots of fun. So anyway, today we've used everything from mica powder over here to liquid acrylics from Amsterdam, as well as the, the thicker acrylics, their basic set. Uh, they call it a standard series, which is just fabulous. We use that today. We've got watered down acrylics. We've got acrylic gesso, white and black, that's come into this play, into play. Uh, we've got some acrylic medium to thin the paint out to create the pouring. Uh, so we've just got everything. And then also we've got the tempera paint sticks. That we've been using. You have three minutes. Okay. Good. Because I'm running out of things to mark on this. <laughs> so one, one of the things I'm going to talk about is I'm, I created a little more density in some areas. This is a very complex piece, but I like that really intense narrative that you can get uh, with the painting. You have a chance to tell a story to layer that. So every subsequent layer you put on there complicates it or potentially complicates it, but it also increases that narrative. And you have a feeling, a sense of history with that piece when you layer things up. So don't be afraid of covering things up with another layer. Or some of this was really fascinating in here that I really liked, but it wasn't didn't have enough depth, and I want depth. I want that narrative. I want to take the poor painting technique and push it beyond what's pretty on the surface. Bring some of your personality into it more. Bring in some of the things that are happening around you into your art. You as artists have the opportunity to speak to others, to help teach or to help make people aware of situations in your life, of either personal outlet, like it's, it's like a psychologist, type thing that you have right here in this surface, or you can also help aid other people to be aware of things they may not have other, otherwise been aware of. Got a question? How long would it take this to dry? It depends on how dry it is in here. If you have a dehumidifier, it could dry by tomorrow. Um, some of the poured pieces I used to do would take a week to dry because they were so damn thick. Excuse me for swearing, but they were really thick. <laughs> I remember those days. Those were really, really thick pieces. Um, so I just saw, I looked down and I know that's really cool. That's one on my desk. One little one pop. We got this really intense color right in the middle. That that fluorescent orange. They call it reflex orange. And this is that Amsterdam ink again. I love the fluorescent colors. The, the reflex and the reflex and the neon colors. So anyway, my throat is about done. Yeah, and I can tell you what's up. So. <laughs> So I'm going to sign off. I appreciate everybody here. This is David Austin with DavidAustinGallery.com. Don't forget to check out our apparel. Get outside, will you? And that's at MuddyPaw.net. Yep. And then you can also link to there from our DavidAustinGallery.com. We appreciate your support. We had a bunch of painting sales that we sent out this week. Thank you very much if you're watching from wherever you might be. And as always, be kind to each other and create without fear. I'm going to go now. <laughs> Take care of myself. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks for joining us. See you next week.